Hi again everybody and welcome to NJPW Extra. I'm Chris Charlton right here in the NJPW Event Center where G1 Climax is underway. There are huge events coming up in the US in July and August as well. And we've got a great free match for you here this week as two G1 entrants in Jonah and David Finley go head to head. That's still to come, but first, let's look at everything that's been happening around the world in New Japan Pro Wrestling this week. In Japan, G1 Climax 32 finally got underway this weekend in Sapporo with a pair of spectacular events. The archives are available free on demand in English on njpwworld.com. And the long, grueling tournament continues with three nights this week. Sendai seeing a main event of Hiroki Goto and Tetsuya Naito, and then two nights in Ota Ward, bringing us a personal grudge match of Tomohiro Ishii versus Jay White, and then Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Tetsuya Naito in these two main events. Speaking of main events, a loaded card is developing for Music City Mayhem in Nashville on July the 30th, a huge part of StarCast. Already announced was a no disqualification war between El Desperado and John Moxley, as well as Clark Connors taking on a returning Davey Richards and Hiromu Takahashi versus Blake Christian. This week added to that mix, the strong openweight championship being put on the line for the first time as Fred Rosser faces the challenge of the giant Big Damo. Former partners exploding as Kushida takes on Alex Shelley one on one. Six-man action sees the return of Shota Umino to the United States, teaming with Yuya Uramura and Fred Yehai against the LA Dojo. And the newly crowned at Forbidden Door IWGP Tag Team Champions FTR, combined with Alex Zane to take on the United Empire represented by TJP and some favorites to win the strong Openweight Tag Team Championships in Aussie Open. And speaking of those championships, the tournament to crown the first champions continued this week on NJPW Strong. Aussie Open indeed booking their spot in the semi-finals when they defeated AEW's Dark Order. It wasn't for lack of trying on Dark Order's part and Evil Uno and Alan Angels were extremely impressive. Angels showed his grit as he withstood the spectacular double team offense from Carl Fletcher and Mark Davis and even countered the Coriolis as he and Evil Uno connected for some very near falls. But as the match broke down, Aussie Open would keep their heads as all around lost theirs. And the Coriolis would see them to victory. Joining them in the right bracket semi-finals will be the Stray Dog Army combination of Mysterioso and Barrett Brown, who advanced past Midnight Heat this week on Strong. Neither team was scared of wearing the black hat, but it was the well-established team of Ricky Gibson and Eddie Pearl that had a lengthy period of control. Pearl tripping Barrett Brown on the floor into a DDT, and then it was all Midnight Heat. But after Brown withstood a Russian leg sweep into an ugly pair of double knees from the Heat, Mysterioso made the save and landed a Cobrada to Gibson outside allowing Brown to pin Eddie Pearl for the win. Also in singles action this week, Tom Lawler took on bad dude Tito. As Lawler was getting ready for his own G1 Climax 32 debut, bad dude Tito, heading to Japan but not part of the G1 lineup, wrestled with a chip on his shoulder and gave Lawler all he could handle. Tito was dogged and impressive as he consistently went for an ankle lock and a camel clutch for a T-bone suplex, a German, and even a blockbuster, but the follow-up frog splash would miss. Lawler took advantage with a pair of kamigoye, and then a rear naked choke before dropping Tito face first to pick up the win. What a great series of events we have for you for NJPW in the US over the next couple of months, starting this Sunday, July 24th, Charlotte, North Carolina, and the Grady Cole Center, NJPW Strong's high alert tapings including Clark Connors, El Desperado, Hiromu Takahashi in a massive three-way bout. Eddie Kingston goes one-on-one -on -one with Jake something. Ren Narita and Kashida team up and much, much more. 
then next week, July the 30th, we want you to join us live in Nashville, Tennessee for Music City Mayhem, a spectacular event headlined by El Desperado and John Moxley in a no DQ match. Kushida facing Alex Shelley 101, the time split is exploding and so much more. Make sure you're there. Then of course, August the 21st, we return to the Vermont Hollywood for Fighting Spirit Unleashed 2022. It's been a full year since we've allowed fans back into NJPW Strong. Make sure you join us for that anniversary. It's going to be a wild one. And speaking of the Vermont Hollywood, that saw a gigantic clash earlier this winter. Jonah, the top dog, an imposing force, and an A-block entrant in G1 Climax 32 faced this year's E-block entrant David Finley 101. Let's take a look at that match. It's our free match this week with Ian Roccaboni and Alex Kosov on the call. Let's head to ringside. So we'll look there at what has set the stage for our main event. From the moment the name Jonah flashed on the on the board at Battle in the Valley, we knew we were in store for something special. His reputation preceded him, but then we got a quick tutelage when he squashed both Juice Robinson and David Finley in short order. Then move on. His debut on New Japan Strong, Lucas Riley, the unfortunate victim of the top dog. But David Finley had something to say about it. We'll see what happens now in the one on one match. Yeah, and uh, what he had to say is that this is his house, and he feels that Jonah is the invader and he wants to defend his home. One of the biggest, baddest, toughest men ever to come out of the Australian wrestling scene. And Jonah with a 500 pound bench press. Alex, how in the world is David Finley gonna do this? Well, the odds are certainly stacked against him. Well, David Finley has made a career out of fighting big men, including Lance Archer. And he's given up size and experience throughout the years to opponents, both in Japan and the United States. But the fourth generation of Fight Finley is ready for battle. And I think that's his greatest strength when he goes up against Jonah, who is more experienced, who is the bigger man, who is stronger. The best thing that Finley has is his fighting spirit. He went through that dojo system. He's a fourth generation guy. He, there's no quit in him. He will fight until there is no life left in him. Talked to Finley earlier today, said it's been a series of two-a-day workouts in preparation for this match. Really working on his cardiovascular endurance and also trying to build as much strength as oh. possible. Get out of the way, my God, Jonah attacking before the bell and Finley able to get out of the way. Uppercut forearm scores, Finley. That's good, and that's how you want to do it. Gain momentum and... The sweat flies off of Jonah as Finley crashes into him. Ducks a pair from Jonah. Oh! And Finley just ran into a, a wall. My pal Gino Gambino, of course, spent a lot of years in Australia fighting, teaming with Jonah. Told me, again, it's the strongest man he's ever been in the ring with. Gino's no small man. He said, able to pick me up with ease. Gino's north of 350. Vertical suplexes, body slams. There's never been anybody in my career, Kevin, who's ever manhandled me the way Jonah does. It's effortless, it's easy. You can't blow him up. And he tells the referee, tells Jeremy Marcus, I do what I want. Finley puts the brakes on. Jonah shot between the second and third rope. Finley, plancha. Oh. oh no, oh no. Oh no, spine first into the steel.
What a dangerous, dangerous opponent. What is Finley going to have to do to pick, the, pick up the victory? The only thing that he can do is use his agility. Use Jonah's own momentum against him. I think that might be the key. But at this point, Finley not able to get back onto his feet. And Jonah now going to put the squeeze on him here. This is no ordinary squeeze either. It's like a bear that's trying to pull you apart limb by limb. Sinking those fingers into the rib cage. That'll make every breath problematic for Finley. And Jeremy Marcus is right there. You can see the pain on the referee's face. He realizes just how much trouble David Finley is in. Goes for the European. Oh! 330 pounds just landed on top of the sternum of Finley. There's a cover. Had no interest in beating Finley there. Just wanted to see if Finley had anything left. Jonah's going to beat it out of him. And look, I mean, Finley is the quicker man, right? But not after taking a sent on like that. That takes all the energy out of you. When you look at what Jonah has done in Australia and the United States, coming off a high profile run on television where he crowned North American champion, and then having new opportunities put before him. Again, how would he respond? Well, he's been traveling across the United States. Oh, come on now. Just traveling across the United States, destroying everyone in their way. It is, it's not been pretty. You know what Finley said? I mean, they've been going back and forth online. Finley said that he's going to beat Jonah so bad that he's going to get fired for a second time. Oh. And I think he was really trying to get in the head of Jonah. I think so. And he's paying for it right now. And now Jonah wanting to see what Finley has, absorbing that chop. And Jonah nearly chopping Finley out of his boots. And now the waist lock. Well, Jonah exclaimed that Finley will kneel before the top dog after he gets done with him. And he's beating him down, wearing him out. Oh, man. Amateur style takedown there. Of course, this is our main event this week. Next week, Team Filthy in the main event. Filthy Tom Lawler teaming with Black Tiger and Jarrell Nelson against Rocky Romero, Fred Rosser, and the returning Taylor, Taylor Distrust. Taylor Rust, oh. who used to be a member of Team Filthy, but came back and surprised Filthy Tom Lawler recently. So we'll see what happens at our main event next week. We'll see if David Finley has any fight left in him. He's been, he's been squeezed by Jonah for a while. Up on the shoulders, no. And Finley, again, throwing everything he has behind that clothesline. Not only does Jonah not go down, he barely moves, but he's staggered on his feet. Oh my God. Jonah swats the right arm of Finley out of the air. A drop kick, and there goes Jonah. Lands on his feet Jordan on the Jacob. floor. Five minutes have passed. Five minutes. Will he tries to punch again, this time gets it. Jonah down to a knee for a second and immediately rolling back into the ring. Uh, this is what it's going to take. High risk maneuvers off the top. And finally able to take Jonah down. Two. Pulling up on the tree trunk like legs of Jonah for added leverage on the pinning combination. First time he was able to take Jonah down. If he can keep him down, that will be a smart strategy. There you go, European uppercut. While Jonah's on his knees. Try not to let him up. Oh! Puts him down. And now Finley, look at this. Thought once Jonah got the advantage, he'd keep the advantage. But Finley showing his, as you said, his fighting spirit, his heart. 
And let's see if he's able to hit his finisher here, looking for the acid drop. The risk with that is that he allowed Jonah up on his feet. Sleeper hold. And again, try to choke the big man out, but Jonah able to swat Finley away, the elbow. Finley is hitting Jonah as hard as he humanly can. Oh, the power slam. And another set time this time, go. Finley moves out of the way. Crucifix, roll up, get the big man, shoulders down two, almost got him three. Look at that. And now the cross face. And this is a great opportunity for Finley. And again, Jonah didn't come here to New Japan strong to tap out. He came here to be the top dog. Finley avoids the backbreaker. But that cross, a cross phase did slow Jonah down a bit. Here he goes, gonna try it, and oh! oh! Backbreaker. Oh, my goodness. Flipping Finley inside out with that lariat. Uh-oh. Oh! Power bomb. With force. And now dragging. Finley, and right above us here, right above us in the red corner, Jonah is going to the top rope. Oh my God, 330 oh. pound splash off the top, it is over. What a impressive performance. What a dangerous, way to finish. Dropping 330 pounds off the top, crushing Finley. And he... Well, as advertised. Another great match to cap off another great NJPW Expo. We'll be back next week with the latest in the G1 updates and much, much more. Can't wait to have you with us. Until then, hope you're getting your